Hi, everybody. It's Mrs. Novoselsky. So I have an update. I didn't come back and give an update for the last couple of days because nothing was happening. But today I checked and I have some news. So first, the bad news. I checked the pine nuts and they are rotten. So I'll show you as best I can. Can you see them in there? They're all kind of gross and nasty. So I'm just going to take those paper towels and everything and put them in the garbage. Pine nuts don't work, so we won't do those again. The other neutral news is with the wild rice, it's not doing anything yet, but they're kind of changing. So I'm going to keep them in their moist paper towel in a sunny window and see. They might still do something. So I'm going to put that down to the side. Okay, so now the good news. First, the navy beans, the one that I put in the, in the cup in the bowl with water in it with the paper towel over the top. They look like they may sprout. They're very hard to see in there. But what happened is that they're getting, let's see if we can see them this way. Maybe, I don't want to mess them up. They're getting bigger and they're starting to make a sprout. So I'll put them in there. When it's a little bit more, you'll definitely be able to see. The real big news is the red beans that we put in the baggie. Do you see right here? Right here, here's the root going out. And then on this side too, you can see the root growing out. So they are growing like crazy, which is very exciting. So what I have learned from this is I think that the baggy method with something that has beans in it, like I bet the navy beans would work in here, red beans, if you have pinto beans, anything like that, if you put it in a baggy with a damp paper towel, seal it up, and put it in and put it in a sunny window I bet you will get your beans to grow alternatively if you take a cup and put a piece of cloth or a paper towel and keep the paper towel damp over the top I think you'll get those beans to grow too just not as fast um you still have to see about the um, wild rice so I will keep you updated and we will see what happens with that. But it's very exciting news about the red beans. So if you want to try this, this was actually pretty easy to do. Oh, look, you can even see here a little bit of a plant growing, just a little tiny bit. So that's exciting. So I will check back with you guys maybe tomorrow or the day after as soon as we see something more. All right, see you later. Bye. snack mix, but did you know that popcorn kernels, beans, peas, acorns, and rice are also seeds? Well, one of our friends, five-year-old Dimitri, wrote in to ask us, how does a seed grow into a plant? Thanks for asking, Dimitri. First of all, seeds come in lots of different shapes and sizes, but they're all made of three parts, an outer shell called the seed coat, a tiny baby plant that's inside the seed called the embryo, and some plant food for the embryo called endosperm. The seed coat has an important job. It covers the entire seed, protecting the little baby plant inside and keeping it from drying out. The seed coat also has super sensing powers. It has special chemicals in it that can tell when the seed is in the right place to start growing. For example, the sunflower seeds and the pumpkin seeds in your trail mix sense that it's not safe to grow. After all, seeds can't grow when they're surrounded by raisins and chocolate chips. So while the seeds are in a bag or in your hands, it's like they're asleep. The seeds are still alive, but they're dormant.
dormant or inactive. Some seeds can stay like this for hundreds or even thousands of years. Great question, Squeaks. To get started, every seed needs water, the right temperature, and the right amount of light. Once the seed has these three things, like when it's planted in some nice wet soil, the embryo, or baby plant, gets the signal to start growing. For plants, this growing process is called germination. First, the seed coat lets some water through to the embryo, but the embryo needs more than just water if it's going to grow. Good thing there's a whole bunch of plant food right there inside the seed. Until the plant can make its own food from sunlight, which it will need leaves to do, it relies on the endosperm for energy. It's like the little baby plant has its own backpack of snacks. So the embryo keeps growing and taking in more water until the seed coat cracks open and the embryo kicks out a kind of a foot. But not at all like my foot. The first part of the plant to come out of the seed is the root. The root always grows downward, no matter what way the seed is planted. A seed can actually tell which way is up and which way is down. So the root pushes down deeper and deeper into the soil, looking for more water and minerals to feed the baby plant. Once the plant is all grown up, those deep roots will have another job. They'll help keep the plant from falling over or blowing away in the wind. But soon after the first baby root finds its way into the dirt, another part of the seed pops out, this time in the opposite direction. A shoot, which has the stem of the plant and a few leaves pushes its way up towards the sunlight. Once the shoot breaks through the soil to the open air above, we say that it's sprouted. Now the plant doesn't need the endosperm anymore because it can make its own food from sunlight. With enough water and sunlight and the right temperature, the young plant will continue to grow, getting bigger and growing more leaves until it's an adult plant and it can produce seeds of its own. Next time you're about to chow down on a handful of sunflower seeds, just think, it's like you've got a whole field of flowers right in your hand. Thanks to our friend Dimitri for asking this great question. And if any of you have a question for any of us here at the fort, let us know by leaving a comment or emailing us at kids at the See you next time, guys.